Hello, Hello. and welcome to Lightways at Life Astrologer with me, Anna Isabel, and my wonderful guest today is Israel Jose. Hello. 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 Good evening. Good day. <laughs> Great to see you again. Great to be here. Thanks for having me. <laughs> and I realized that I spelled your name in a rather Spanish way. So yes. I, again, it's oh. Israel. Jose. Oh, excuse me. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but some people say oh, Jose. It's like I'm cool with it. It's fine. <laughs> well, um, we've been having um, a delightful time with Mercury retrograde. And yes. It seems quite appropriate that I would begin by mispronouncing your name, really. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> definitely. Definitely. Everything. Definitely. <laughs> so um now you are actually one of the first guests um that i ever had on lightways and oh wow <laughs> yeah but it seems very appropriate to have you back mm -hmm. uh at the first recording um since i hit a thousand subscribers oh wow okay <laughs> i like that <laughs> yeah it feels very apt to have you back and thank you everybody in in the audience who um has been with me from the start and who has joined since and um, it's wonderful to be able to do this, to, to be able to share astrology with you all. So thank you all for your support. And thank you, Israel, for yours. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. And, and congratulations for the 1,000 subscribers. That's good. Good stuff. It seems a, a very big number all of a sudden. <laughs> yeah, well, it is. <laughs> now you have to strive for more. 2,000, 3,000. Uh, yes, <laughs> now we have to strive for more. Mm -hmm. So you are here. And funny enough, in some ways... <laughs> It's a bit, it's doubly apt that you mm -hmm. should be here today because of the subject um, of our conversation today. Yes. Which is about a house that's associated with wishes and yes. all good things. Yes, and most definitely. Yes. As, it's the 11th house. Yes. Um, so, yeah, uh, the 11th house. Um, I mean, when I first came into astrology, and as you know, of course, you know, you read the books and you read about the houses and, you know, you read about this 11th house. And for many or for most of some of the earlier uh, books that or the first books that I encountered, it was like, oh, the house of friends or groups or associations that you belong to and so on and so forth. Uh, but then there were other books that, that would say hopes, dreams and wishes. And I never quite got what, what do you mean, hopes, dreams and wishes? Uh, you know, yes, we all have hopes, we all have wishes, we all have dreams, and there's nothing wrong with that. But uh, uh, in what context, I didn't quite know how to. So when uh, I started sort of like digging uh, a bit more into the traditional medieval kind of approach, then it started to become clearer and then how it's also trans, uh, you know, uh, if you want to say transformed or 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 you know, um, you know, evoluted into today's, um, uh, um, you know, context. But I do find a lot of the time, a lot of people just tend to just, again, it just stops there. It's house of friends and acquaintances, which is fine and which are very important. They play major roles in our lives, of course. Um, but this hopes, dreams and wishes, what is the meaning of that? What what do we mean by hopes, dreams and wishes? And, uh, you know, my wish is not necessarily going to be your wish and vice versa. So what was that? And what is the astronomical? Uh, because the houses essentially or traditionally came about because of the astronomical relationship of how the sun rose uh, uh, early in the morning from the east, from the ascendant, culminated at noon at the midheaven or the zenith and set in the west at the descendant and at the nadir or the icy, the fourth house. And it will, it, a lot of it was in context of how the sun in particular, but of course the, the planets are also carried throughout the day as well, but how they, you, you know, uh, how the sun was in relation to those particular positions. And it's there we start to now to kind of get a grasp of, oh, why the 11th house has that particular uh, 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 label, that, that, you know, that naming. Um, and it's an it's a house that is quite, especially in traditional medieval astrology it's a house that was given so much so much tremendous uh, 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 credence importance uh, uh, you know spotlight it was a very important house it was 
one of the best houses uh you know it's not it's not you know a lot of times today we may lean towards more the fifth house i mean the fifth house even traditionally was a good house even it by today's standards same it's still a great house and and stuff and it's known as the house of great fortune and children our creative expression um but the the the, the best of all the houses seemed all the authors classical authors seem to lean towards this 11th house <laughs> well, it, it was the house in which Jupiter had his joy, and it's That's still correct. It. So it's the house of, in which Jupiter finds his joy. Exactly, and, and so, yeah. So I just wanted to say with with that, um, uh, and 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 again, there we have the houses of joy of the of the planets, and and correctly, just like how you've pointed out, it was the house of joy for Jupiter, and and again, I feel we also need to get to the bottom of well, why is that? Is, is you know his house and and that goes even for the other planets as well in terms of the houses that they're in why is it that there should be the house some of them are quite obvious in some kind of way but some of them are a little bit obscure so why should that house be the house of joy for that planet uh because you, you don't really associate jupiterian things with 11th house uh, 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 especially with the basics of what eleven five. Once you start mentioning hopes, wishes, and dreams, then you start getting you're getting to the root of it. You're getting to the bottom of it. But if you just say friends, it's like okay, it's not something that you you would readily associate with Jupiter or acquaintances or groups. I mean, you may think of it in terms of okay, a group could be large. Okay, that that can be an argument. That's fine. Uh, a group does contain large amounts of people, so that's kind of something. There's something jovial or Jupiterian about that in some way, but it's not something that you would readily associate with with Jupiter. But when you start then saying hopes, wishes, and dreams, then it starts to make some some form of sense. So. <laughs> Let's think about that then. Mm -hmm. How is it that this house becomes associated with hopes, wishes, and dreams? Because for me, mm -hmm. it kind of makes sense that it's not so close to the sun or the sunrise, if you like, because it's right. not the 12th house. It's further yes. on. It's for, right. But yes. it's for me, it has the energy of that part of the morning where you've woken up and you're no right. longer you know, desperately in need of coffee to wake up. Exactly. Uh, a bit more alert, a bit more awake, and nothing's gone wrong yet. Right. And it's that feeling of spring as well, where everything is just getting started. And if you're a gardener, nothing's got aphids yet. Nothing's eaten your lettuce yet because your lettuce hasn't <laughs> grown up yet. Yes. So there, there's still, a, for me, that's a feeling of hope because spring is that feeling of hope and that early morning, but not so early that you're half asleep is 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 a time of hope. Nothing's quite yeah. gone wrong yet. Nobody's phoned yeah. you with bad news yet. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. hope for a good day. M most definitely. And and you, you, you're, you're right on the money in terms of with that explanation. And the, the, it, it also comes from the idea that, at, at, you know, the ascendant, of course, is the place of that sunrise, uh, where the sun rises in the morning and it's, it's culminating on that eastern horizon. But as it starts to rise, when it's going through the 12th house, it's quite interesting. It's one of the reasons why the 12th house is considered, uh, it's connected with the womb, of course, and it's connected with uh, uh, things that are undeveloped. Uh, and, and when the sun is transiting or going through that 12th house, at that stage, that early side of the morning, the sun is still weak. It hasn't got strength yet depending which parts of the world you're at, very often sometimes early in the morning when you see the sun rising, it looks hazy. It doesn't even look that clear, to be quite honest. And that's, that's where we start to get the understanding of what the 12th house is about uh, because of its weakness, its undevelopment, hence why the womb, because a child or we are undeveloped while we're in the womb. So it, it, it's, it's likened to that condition in the womb. It's, it's, it's still growing, it's still getting, it's trying to get muster some strength. But the moment it crosses from that 12th house into the 11th house, that's where it's starting to rise to power. So the 10th house or the MC, the zenith point was seen as the place of power. But the sun is then rising, it's culminating, it's going towards a place of power. So there, uh, just like what you said, then there is that sense of hope 
or, or, or that we could say maybe light at the end of the tunnel or that, you know, we see the sun started to muster strength. And that's where that are. The hopes, wishes and dreams now start to be, if you want to say, um, recognized in some kind of way. Um, another word that is often associated with the 11th house, which is not so common, it's the house of aspirations, what we're aspiring for, because the sun is climbing, it's making its way to the place where the where the goal, the goal is going to be where the 10th house, where the, but that 11th house is what gives it that, it's preparing it for it, it's lifting it up to that, and that's where we start to now really get a sense of, ah, this is the place of hopes, wishes, and dreams. Uh, uh, um, yeah. So if I'm looking at that, then I'm also thinking this is the house of promise. That's, you know, the yes. promise of what's to yes. come. Yes. And, okay, so this is all very well. <laughs> but for somebody who's got, let's say, Saturn in that house. Right. Or, you know, the planet that rules that house is afflicted you know, yeah. by a square to Chiron or something. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what happens if this promise, these mm. hopes and wishes are tarnished by a planetary yeah. association with that house? House, yes. Um, that's a very, very, very good question. Um, now, the 11th house, like I said, was, was, was favoured, was seen as one of the most favourite. Um, I mean, the, one of the only things that actually um, didn't make it perhaps maybe the most favourite is the fact that it's not an angular house. Uh, uh, <laughs> um, uh, if it was an angular house, definitely it would probably be the favourite. Uh, but so it was even said that even malefics, even uh, planets that are, quote unquote, badly placed or difficultly or challengingly placed, they were modified in that house. They were, they were, they were, it's a little bit, I always, even with my students, I always say planets in the 11th house, even, even a planet like Mars or Saturn, which are considered malefics, is sort of like having, if you take a naughty boy, but put him in a very good school. <laughs> you know, you know, or, or, or I'd say naughty boy, it could be a naughty girl as well. It could be a naughty person, Let, let's use that. But putting them in a good school is going to definitely modify. They still may be mischievous and still be naughty. That character may still be there with that person. But the fact that they're in an environment that is, you know, you know, well structured and and well behaved and good teachers around them, that person is going to definitely it's going to have an effect on them. And that's how the eleventh house is. Now. It can be, and they did also make that clear that, yes, if the ruler or planets in the 11th house are very heavily afflicted, just like what you said, maybe a square by Chiron or something of that nature, they will, it will still bring hope on some level. However, that hope will be, quote unquote, afflicted. It will be challenged in some kind of way. Perhaps maybe the person may have to work a bit harder depending on the nature of the aspect, in order to be able to achieve that hope or that aspiration which they are going for. Um, they may be still maybe to get, they, they will be perhaps, because it's the 11th house, and the 11th house is friends, associations, uh, groups, clubs that you may be looking, they could perhaps maybe get help from maybe a group or a group of people or association or society perhaps, but it can will still be very, very challenging in some way, shape, or form. So that's how it would be. So even if the Lord of the 11th house is afflicted, they uh, it, it's still the 11th house, so it will still have some beneficiaries to it. But it could be that the beneficiaries do come with a struggle, maybe with a fight, uh, maybe with some sense of rejection or, 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 you know, or experiences of rejection, or difficult circumstances, but they still will be some benefic beneficiaries uh, in terms of that are coming about that. So it's good to know that there are benefits to be had, irrespective yes. of how um, unpromising the 11th house looks. Yes. yes. My 
question about this because the way I've always seen it also yeah. is that, you know, some people are born with a silver spoon in their mouths, as they say. Yes, yes. If you have an aff afflicted 11th house, that's not you. <laughs> However, it does not mean that all is lost. Yes. Maybe it means that maybe you were you were not taught to have hopes and wishes. Yes. You have to discover that these things are also for you as much as they might be for somebody else. Yes. Yes, most definitely. It might mean that maybe depending on the nature of the 11th house, you're somebody who talks yourself out of your hopes and dreams. Yes. Most in definitely. favor of realism. Yeah. <laughs> right by others see, be seen as pessimism. Right. <laughs> so, you know, you, I guess we're, what I'm saying is we have to consider what stands in the way Mm -hmm. of us having hopes and dreams and you know as a therapist yes i often have to encourage people yes to play with their imagination to mm -hmm. give themselves permission to have hopes and dreams. and dreams right right yes yes uh uh, uh <laughs> again another great question and i i, I feel I, I feel everybody uh regardless or what level we want to say we're at or what position we, we find ourselves in we all have aspirations and dreams or you know now, now we we may they, they can be maybe doubts of course pe pessimism also as well there can be things that knock us back maybe there's an inner voice that's saying oh you know you're not good enough or you know or you oh, really you know <laughs> you think you can do that you know that kind of thing um, but but we, we we do all have we, we dream. <laughs> there there is something that we, we you know we long for. We, we, we look and and again that's another thing about about the part of the eleventh house also as well, because although it's our eleventh house, and this is one of the reasons why the eleventh house is also it's very community, it's very social orientated. It's quite humanitarian in some kind of way. So the 11th house is also shedding light on our expectations and our dreams and hopes and dreams of how we want society to be. You see, it's our projection of we want society to be like that. And it's quite interesting um, when we look at charts of politicians, it's very common for them to have very heavily loaded 11th houses or significant, you know, 11th house rulers. And again, when I was doing charts, I was like, well, why, why 11th house? I mean, they're, they're a politician. I thought they'd have 10th house, and okay, we know about the 12th house, but why, you know? And there is something about that society, larger society, the community. I, I want to do this. I want to bring this to the society. I want to, you know, and, and, and then there's also something also about each politician is a leader of a party or is a part of a party. You know, again, that's 11th house. Um, idealism, isn't it? Yes, it, yes, it, yes. I, and I was just thinking about, do you know, over the course of our conversation, yes, my love and admiration for our fathers, for, right. for, for our forefathers, well, yes, just expanded. Yes. Because isn't it? the most beautiful thing that they considered hopes, wishes, mm. and ideals yes. to be so important yes. that they actually had to have a house, house. <laughs> for them. <laughs> for that, yeah. yeah. And yeah. I just, I, I marvel at that because it's almost like, well, I'm sure that you understand when I say I fall in love with the astrology over and over and over, over again, again right, yeah. and over the course of our conversation, my love for our art has just been amplified purely <laughs> because of the foresight, the wisdom, the insight, and the understanding of humanity yeah. that 
existed in those ancient astrologers that thought, you know, this is really important. Yes, 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 most definitely. Uh, uh, 11th house is tremendously important. And um, and it's interesting because uh, uh, um, I think it was Vatis Valens who said the planet that rules your 11th house or planets in your 11th house, if you, uh, you do have one, they are like your guardian angels that are watching over you. Hence why it was known, uh, one of the words that was known for it, it was the house of good spirits. And um, that planet was seen as, a, it was a, it was the, or, or the good daemon, as the, you know, the, the ancient Greek would have. So that daemon, that spirit presided over you and it came through or would manifest through beneficiaries or benefactors in your life, friends, people who are of great benefit to you in some way, shape or form. Um, so even though a planet may be uh, um, just like you said, maybe, you know, challenged, placed or, uh, you know, inflicted by a square, by, you know, uh, you know, you still may get somebody who comes along and says, oh, here you go. Oh, I, I know, I know a place where you can get this. Or a, a friend will say, oh, you, you know, I, I'll help you out. You know, I've, I've got a bit, you know, or maybe you're down on a bit of money and uh, here you go. You know, here's, here's a couple of pounds, you know, to get by to, you know, that is how the 11th house would be. So the affliction would be the difficulty that you find yourself in, but then the 11th house would be the friend or the acquaintance or the associate who would say, here you go, or the group, it could be a club that says, okay, we're supporting, you know, hence why there's a uh, charity also is linked with the 11th house also as well. You see, um, these are all 11th house um, uh, situations. So, it's a it's a tremendously very very important house, and it, it it kind of takes me back even to my childhood with my father. And it, it, again, of course, I wasn't into astrology as, as as a child, but obviously when I got into astrology, a, a, a penny dropped <laughs> uh, because my father kept he from a very young age. I, I just I'd come home with a friend and he'd say, who's that? You know, and I'd say, oh, that's John. You know, that's my friend. And he'd be like, okay, right. And then next week, who's that? Well, that's Wayne. Who's that? He's my friend. And okay, right. And he, he, he kept, there was something about him. He had a very strong discipline about who are your friends? Be mindful who you hang around with and who you call your associates and what kind of people are you because that's how people are going to see you and they're going to measure you based on who you it's not about who you know it's all about who you know as well and and you know and uh, there'll be there'll be times I remember the time I went to my dad and I said oh I know such and such and you know he was a manager of a company and he's like oh and then he turned around and said to me he goes does he know you it's all, <laughs> it's all right you say you know such and such does this person know you because that's a friend a friend you you know uh, you know and one day he i remember he 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 posed the question to me he goes what would you rather a million pounds or a million friends and i answered i said a million pounds of course <laughs> very hastily and he says have a think about it and it took a while and after a while the penny dropped and it's like right and you know, I've got a planet in 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 the eleventh house that rules the house of my father, and 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 I I when I got into astrology, it started to make total sense why he kept banging on about this. Who's your friends? Bring your friends around. I want to see them. Who who are they? What do they do? What kind of character do they have? You know, are, are they are they friends? It was of really great importance. But you know, again, it's that it's so huge for those reasons, yes. but also because who we hang out with yes. influences us. Yes. Do we have good friends? Do we have bad friends? Mm -hmm. Do we have friends who support our hopes and wishes? Right. Do we have friends who diminish them? Right. Mm -hmm. And so what is, so if we're talking again about a, an 11th house that has a less fortunate color to it by virtue right. of the ruling planets right. uh, or the, you know, being malefic or the ruling planets being afflicted. Right. It's really, what do we, what are our hopes and wishes? Mm -hmm. And why are we settling for people mm -hmm. who do not have our best interest at heart? Right. Yes. Right. Yes. Why okay. is that? Why is that? And I think, <laughs> 
see, these are all questions that that 11th house yes. would provide insight into. Most it's, definitely. You know, it, your father's saying to you, well, who are your, who are your friends? Yes, That's yes. a really major question, isn't it, actually? Yes. yes. When you think about it. Yes. It's fundamental. Who are your friends? Mm -hmm. Right, yes, yes. And he, he he would get the, he, that was his thing that you know what a friend is because I would just say it willy nilly you know and uh, but at the time I I wasn't of you know development where I fully under but he 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 was it was it will he I I he took it very seriously that this friend of yours that you're that, you know um uh, that you know that you're calling a friend are they your friend do you know what a friend really is and and what kind of friend are you hanging around with. But that's also interesting because yeah. this is the house, when we say friends, it's it's allies, isn't it? Right, yes. <laughs> have allies. Because yeah. we're thinking about that sun moving up. Right. It, the peak and the of achievement. Right. And who are our allies? Because we need allies if we're going to progress to that peak, which <laughs> is the fruition of our hopes and wishes. Exactly. So who are our allies? So are these people that we call friends, acquaintances? Are they fair weather friends or are they real allies? Right, and that's right, the question, right. isn't it? Yes, it is. It is very, 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 very much. Yes. And then we can start to see how the 11th house really starts, you know, getting large amounts of importance. And then the Jupiter that's his favorite house because it's the house because he is the planet of hope when we use the word hope it's jupiter and there you, we start to see the relationship we start to see the connection it's there where jupiter can give us great amounts of hope and huge amounts of hope and we find people who are fortunate enough to perhaps maybe have jupiter in the 11th house how it how it how it favors them a person who comes to mind um um who was part of a huge group probably one of the hugest bands in the last century is uh paul mccartney of the beatles <laughs> and has this exalted jupiter <laughs> in the 11th house and you think wow <laughs> exalted in the sign of cancer and just to point out that the symbol for cancer in ancient egypt was the beetle <laughs> oh yes of course it was but <laughs> else too yeah. because it's in cancer and of course that makes me think of the song let it be oh, you yes. know mother mary <laughs> let it be. <laughs> it, it's funny because i had those lyrics in my head yesterday and i was thinking about that oh wow and 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 and, and so here he is that that jupiter in cancer and, and there's that vision now i i don't i'm I don't know that it was he who wrote the lyrics. It could have been John Lennon for that one. It, I don't it could know. have been, yes. It could have but been. He, I, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I, I know him and John Lennon probably were the more, uh, you know, uh, bigger stars, if you want to say, out of out of the big. But, um, and he played a very crucial role in it. And he, he wrote many of the songs. I, but it is, yes. I'm going to have to look up who wrote those lyrics now. <laughs> <laughs> Bit of homework there, yes. <laughs> I'm just gonna have to go and look it up because I can't yes. remember. What I so, okay, well, what you've done is you've just helped to f flesh out this eleventh house. Yes. So, that not this fluffy, two-dimensional hopes, dreams, wishes. Yeah. How to in? What you've done is you've just Get, turned it into a beautiful, you know, 3D, 5D picture <laughs> yeah. that, um, that's that got a tremendous amount of depth and beauty yeah. and which has made me love astrology. <laughs> Even more, yes. And and I urge people, astrologers or not students, to to look at their, their 11th house because uh, uh, that is that, that is their, their daemon. Uh, that, that is what, what can help you. That's what can... Uh, you know, um, assist your hopes. Uh, it can assist your hopes. It can assist your aspirations. It can help it. And whether it comes through a group or it might, it could be an individual person, maybe an individual friend or a peer or an associate. That's fine. But to urge to to gravitate towards that, and also one of the ways of how to get the best of the eleventh house is to try to connect uh, with the the, the archetype 
of the planetary ruler or if you've got planets in there to try to do more of what that planet likes doing or how it expresses itself and you you tap into you get the more out of that 11th house by doing that the the, the good spirit the daemon will then really be you know evoked or invoked and in some kind of way in your life where you will see it much more but it will also show how you uh, 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 so for again quickly example i have the moon in the 11th house and from a, a young child it, it's always been i there's something about wanting to feed people. It, it's, it's, it, it's, um, um, I mean, I teach now online, but even with my students, it was, you know, I used to have a place where we, where I, where I was teaching at, at Stockwell and, and I'd just bring food and, 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 and I was just known for that. It's like, you know, and everybody said, you're a feeder, aren't you? And I'm like, yes, I am. And, and, and there was something, even at the world at large, if there was something that I, that really, would piss me off or got me really wound up was to see people who they couldn't afford food or they, they can't, you know, for, for me, number one is like, at least oh, I understand people can find themselves in different circumstances, but at least every, let everyone be fed. There's enough food to feed everyone and let everyone. And that's always been my finger. It's always food. It's, it's food. And there's friends that always say, now come on, I want to take you out for dinner and stuff like that. And it's, always, it's always food. It's, it's all food related. And it's, that's that moon. <laughs> so I'm going to make you laugh because right. yeah. the, the, when I teach, in the house yes i always used to provide meals and tea <laughs> and eggs for my students and i'd be teaching on a saturday because mm. if the, the lessons would be for the whole day right and i'd spend my entire fridays basically cooking right for my students the yeah. following day and my moon rules the 11th the house, 11th house. <laughs> and, and you're going to laugh because it's part of a grand trine involving Venus and Taurus and my ascendant. Wow, wow. <laughs> what am I doing? I am creating, I'm I'm actually just beginning a community gardening project to help oh, people be it. self in their own vegetables and fruit you, so, you've, you couldn't have said it better I mean that, that is like classic classic astrology at work classic you couldn't have <laughs> couldn't have said it better that that's the 11th house at work there's uh, always something there so it, it, for some people it's working on a maybe subconscious or subtle more subtle level but if you actually take time to look at your 11th house you find that you 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 you're you're connecting with it anyway, but if you can connect to it on a more conscious level and really, you know, it, quote unquote, feed or you know, make that planet to become alive and tap into the energies of that planet, you will find that it really works for you. Israel, thank you so much <laughs> for this beautiful and <laughs> well inspiring look at the. <laughs> side of the of of the um of the houses oh, thank yeah. you so no thank you thank you for having me really been a great pleasure now <laughs> you've given a talk at the astrological uh lodge of london on on this yes. subject so yes. i would people and i'll be putting a link to it in the description box but i would urge people to please um if you want to know more um just go to the lodge's website and yes. find how you can get the recording but i i believe you have your own podcast as well Yes, I do. <laughs> I do have my own podcast, yes. <laughs> and so I think what you can do is send me a link to that so I can put that in the description box. No problem, no problem, no problem. What is your podcast? Uh, it's called the Lunar Lounge Podcast. Uh, so th there we go again, Lunar Lounge, uh, 11th house, moon. <laughs> you are. And I'll put the link to your website in the description box as well. Thank yeah. you so for your time today thank you thank you very much <laughs> and next time now quite aptly uh yes. we're in a period with uh mercury retrograde we're going yes. to be at mercury retrograde in the natal chart yes and then <laughs> goodbye <Yeah. laughs>